are terms. 5x divided by 6 is a term. Negative 1 is a term. 50 is a term. The variable is x. The coefficient of that x is actually 5 6 The constant, negative 1. Like terms, they're on opposite sides of the equal sign. So we're going to have to move off our constant. That's our first step. 5, 6x is equal to 51. Next, we're going to have to split off our coefficient from the variable. It's a fraction, so we're going to use the reciprocal. What's down comes up, what's up comes down. That needs to be repeated on this side to keep the equality. All this can neutralize to 1. x is equal to, I'm going to put my 51 in a fraction. It doesn't look too neat. Let me do it on a separate line. 51 over 1 times 6 over 5. Cancel on the diagonals. Oh, unfortunately, we can't. Because divisibility rules say to divide by a 5, you have to have it end in a 0 or a 5, and this does not. So we're going to have to multiply tops. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. And 1 times 5 is 5. So we have x is equal to 306, a huge improper fraction. But it's easy to do finger division to get this into lowest term. x is equal to 5 divides into 3, too small. 5 divides into 30, yep, 6 times. 5 divides into 6 once with 1 6 left over. Look how easy that was to do that with finger division. Do you see why it was important to learn your multiplication tables? Those are the crux for a lot of what we do in upper math. And the, the uh, equations, algebra, polynomials, upper math is not as confusing if you have committed your multiplication tables to memory. They are used in a lot of different ways and they, uh, they afford you to be able to, to use shortcuts on some of these more complicated uh, algebraic problems. Also, when you get into a situation where you have a time element, you know, where you, you only have so much time in order to turn your test in, then some of these shortcuts are going to be valuable to you just for the ease of the calculation and not tiring you out so you can do more complicated problems faster.